Hello everyone, I'm Emily. And I'm Sandra. And welcome to Pega Sisters Live. Welcome. <laughs> so if you're new to our show, what we do is we like to take the brony perspective of everything and put it in a girl's perspective. And we like to talk and hear ourselves talk. And um <laughs> We love to interact with the chatty box. It's one of our favorite things about having a live stream on here because you guys are so great. And uh, what we do on the show is Emily will have brownie music suggestions of the week, and we do shout-outs. Every Saturday, I will ask, like, a random question, like, hey, what's your favorite pony? Or, hey, do you like Batman? And if you say no, obviously, I'm not going to pick you. Um... <laughs> But, yeah, I get five of those after we screen the people to make sure we're not telling you to follow someone who does not need anyone to follow them. Oh <laughs> and um, also, Emily picks a video, a fan video, for us to review every week. And right. we have news. Lots of news. We love to have news. And we have a super, super duper awesome guest today. We've got M.A. Larson. Wee! And I was actually wondering if the A, his name, stands for alicorn. But it's... But it's a bad joke. <laughs> no. No, I'm I hear, I, I hear the crickets. The crickets in the chatty box, like, that's <laughs> rough. That's rough. Just stop right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I'm wondering if everyone's all right with the whole alicorn thing. Oh, yeah. How do you guys feel about that? I don't know much about it, but... All I know is in the X-Men movie, that guy with wings did not dig having wings. I guess he cut not. him off. No, one, no one's digging the wings. Oh, I'm pulling up things, sorry. Did not I want to pull up things. I don't want wings. <laughs> what? You don't I, want wings? No! Ugh, I like wings. Obviously, I'm a Pegasus. I'm a Pegasus. I'm a Pegasus. I'm a Pegasus. I um I am an earth pony an with earth the magical pony. power of standing on the earth. <gasps> no way. So way. <laughs> oh my god. What? Oh my god. So guys. Oh my god, what's going on? <laughs> how's the chatty box doing tonight? I'm actually gonna open up the chatty box, and if my chatty box opens up on the screen, I apologize because it probably will. If it did. Well, then the ch it's like sort Inception of. chatty okay. box within a chatty box. It's the chatty box on the chatty box. Whatever. Okay. Same thing. Steve Holt. Uncle Mike. <laughs> Ermagerd. Okay. There we go. So. We're going to get started with news. Do you want to do that? Want to do news, Sandra? You interested? Mm, I Maybe. guess so. Okay, so. I guess it's okay. <laughs> news of the week! And last week! <laughs> okay, so um, Netflix on Xbox Live has season three of My Little Pony. You can't watch it yet, but it will be there soon. It's like a teaser to say, oh, hey. We're going to put this on for you to watch. Woohoo! Woohoo! And, um, Sleepless in Ponyville is fixed to be on iTunes. So, woohoo! Awesome. And Fighting is Magic placed fourth at Evo, which is really cool because that's the fourth place. That's better than last place. <laughs> or just, like, not even making it on there. That's I know! <laughs> we are fourth! And then I didn't really know much about this, but Super Smash Ponies sounds a lot like fighting is magic, but yeah. Super <laughs> Smash Ponies sounds neat. Um, and there's a possible Twilight Sparkle DVD in April. Ooh, I like that. With all of her collective episodes. I so. know a specific episode will probably end up in that one. No, I wonder. It's I wonder. April. Okay, <laughs> I want to read the next one because this is the best thing ever. Guys, My Little Pony, as everyone knows, is heading to Japan. Oh my god, I love Japan. I hope they have, like, My Little Pony conventions. We'd have In to Japan. go to one. We'd have to go to one. 
Oh my god. I know, I need to bring you, because you know more Japanese than I do. <laughs> that Wouldn't that be the coolest thing ever? Oh my god. Oh my god. That'd be so cool. I I love Japanese and Japan, all that culture and stuff. So, like, Your mixed... culture is awesome. Yeah, mixed with that and ponies, that would be literally... Oh my god. Best I have a feeling that life. they're going to have the best toys, too. I Yeah, because they're so talented, I think they would have, like, super, like... I could imagine them just, like, building a giant pony robot, like, oh, yeah, no big deal. Or, like, the Neko Mimi ears, so, like, have pony ears. <gasps> oh, my God. Neko Mimi. Not, but it wouldn't be, it wouldn't be, it wouldn't be Neko Mimi, because that's kitty ears. But that'd be so cool, like, having pony, moving pony ears and moving pony tails. <gasps> oh, jeez. Like, like a pony Furby? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> you can turn Furbies evil. Did you know that? No. Like, the new Furbies, if you're mean to them, they turn evil and start making gurgling evil noises. Oh, my. I don't like that. This is, that's great. That, they always <laughs> freaked me out when I was a kid, anyways. Chatty Box, I love Furbies. I have two Furbies in my room, but they're really old, and they don't work because of the battery acid. Uh, now I'm going to have a nightmare tonight if I like a Furby chasing me down the hall. Never watched Gremlins then, Emily. Oh, I did watch that one as a kid. Oh my god, that freaked me out so much. But isn't that the one where they like, uh, they um, they broke into the movie theater and watched Snow White? Is that it? I don't think so. Oh darn it! Which one is that? Now I feel stupid. Which one's the one where like they broke the into the movie theater and the watched Gremlins, Snow White? Gremlins, and you feed them after midnight, and they turn ugly. Someone said, yes, that was the Grim Reaper. Oh, well, then it was, and I'm just blanking. Oh, okay, I knew it. Oh, someone said the sequel. That's why I didn't know. Oh, yes, okay. Yeah, that was, that's, like, the only thing I remember as a kid, because I thought that was the funniest part ever. They're all, like, singing hi-ho, and they're, like, throwing popcorn and stuff. That was funny. But, um, anyways, we're getting off topic. Comic book news, Sandra. Comic book news. So, we reported this on last, uh, about this last week, but... I actually got this, and it's worth getting if you're a collector of variant covers or just a cool cover. So, and it's $10 for two comic covers, which is a little expensive because the comics I normally buy are $2.99. And I guess some, when they come from different companies, go up to $3, $5. But this one comes together, and they're sealed, so, like, they're very collectible. And... Mm -hmm. One side um, of what they come in is Dr. Hoof's, or Hoof, however you pronounce it. However you want to say it. However you want to say it. With Derpy, who has the sonic screwdriver in her mouth, glowing her derpy eyes up. And um, it's really awesome. And the other side is Vinyl Scratch, and she's just doing her thing. Scratching some vinyl. Very and yes, nice. they're the Hot Topic ones, and... We can just call it the doctor. The doctor. But then that, that confuses me with Mad Father, and I play that game, and it creeps me out. <laughs> That's so cool. Merchandise. So, the Pinkie Pie and Vinyl Scratch Boxes are now restocked. Oh, at the Interplay Store. Cool. I already have my Vinyl Scratch Box, but I need a Pinkie Pie Box, so I might have to get this I now. saw the Pinkie Pie Box, and it's so cute. It has balloons all over the side. Oh. I got the vinyl scratch box, which everyone probably saw in my video. I, like, tossed it around because I was just <laughs> through it. <laughs> I was so mad. No, but, um, yeah, I want to get the Pinkie Pie box because I'm, like, collecting everything. Collect all the boxes! But, uh, Collect that's... Oh, God, I catch them all! That's how I am with pony items. Like, it's yeah, a I box. Can't... Oh, we will be reporting on the derpy box in a minute. It's yeah. a tin. Gosh. Stop. Hey, you Stop guys. Stop Stop spoiling our stuff we want to tell you about. Yeah, sorry. Stop it. Stop it. So, mm -hmm. Twilight Toy is coming soon. Giant Alicorn Twilight Sparkle. Wait, With wow. blue wings. Yeah, wait, isn't, isn't that like the $50 one? Yes. Dude, that's... Ridiculous. That's ridiculous. I'm sorry. That's a little crazy. I don't think so. I would not it be like, oh, so I've got 50 bucks here. I could either get a new cosplay, um... I could, uh, let me think. I could get a couple pony shirts, or I could get a Twilight Sparkle with wings, or and I a, could just go... And really weird glitter on her face. Like, yeah, like, what is that? Or I could just go and 
make some wings out of cardboard and paste them <laughs> on my Twilight that I already have. I've got two of them. <laughs> One can have wings. One of them can have cardboard wings. I think that'd be fine. But, yeah, 50 bucks. That's a little crazy. I don't know. I mean, I know. Well, I, maybe. I, know buy it. I okay. wish that she could just, like, learn the power to hover or something with her <laughs> with her magic. <laughs> Someone said they heard you open up your can of ring, uh, Red Bull. Oh, yeah, that was Red Bull. <laughs> That's hilarious. Oh, my God. So, yeah, I yeah, but, you know, I think they know that not the parents of the little girls, they're probably not going to want to buy it, but uh, a bunch of bronies are going to want to buy it. And they bronies, know do unite. It. Do not get <laughs> Ugly Twilight. Ugly <laughs> Twilight with wings, 50 bucks. That's crazy. That's just their tactic. They're like, oh, yep, uh, bronies. Go crazy it. on the blind bags. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Brownies, There'll be some no. new ones. No brownies. No brownies, chatty box. All right, it's so not funny. So as you guys are already saying in the chatty box, Derpy Interplay Ten released the twentieth of March. Looks it's like really neat because it's got Derpy on the front and then little Derpy little comic strip kind of things, and she looks like Nyan Cat with a rainbow coming out of her. Oh my god, that's so adorable. Okay, and we got possible Pony Monopoly. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That would be, like, the coolest thing. I wonder what, um, like, what the figures would be. It'd probably just be, like, all the main six. Uh, how many, Chatty Box, how many pieces do you get with Monopoly? I haven't played in so long because it's been a while for me, yeah. I table flip. Table flip. But, I mean, if you want your own Pony Monopoly, you can do what I did with my Clue game. Six. And repaste what the names of the rooms are and you can land in four point two correct arcane light wins four point two pieces hitchhiker's guide to the galaxy announces <laughs> that that is the number of the universe <laughs> so yeah they said six so yeah main six that would work watch them use not the main six and forget somebody and use some random one. They'll just, like, have, like, Bon Bon or something. I want to be Bon Bon. No, they'll, ha they'll have Twist. Like, the <laughs> most hated pony. I'm sorry, not hated, but just... Oh, my gosh. I'm going to cosplay her now. She has red hair, right? I dig red it's, hair. Like, super red curly hair. Oh, my gosh. Should I cosplay Twist? Should she be my vampire? Not Doesn't vampire. My zombie cosplay. Doesn't she have, like, purple glasses or something? I would so love some purple glasses. <laughs> That would be actually really. I can like, imagine that you the actually kind that make my eyes look really big, but I won't be able to see, so I'll probably run into a wall. I think it's fun to do like cosplays that like don't like no one ever does them. Like when I went to Ohio, like College, Diamond no Dogs. One, yeah, Diamond Dogs. Like no one did that. No one's done it, and I appreciate it. At freaking Ohio Con, like no one, no one was Sweetie Belle besides me. Even though I know there's a few Sweetie Bells out the Sweetie Bells out there, but I mean, like really, like I was the only Sweetie Belle. It's fun, but whatever. That'd be really cool if you did um twist. Actually, I, I imagine that you should do that. Like you can do like wear a little um what are they called? Wear um ah uh, what are they called? Oh my god! I kind of want to cosplay Doctor Who's instead. Doctor Who's okay. That'd be cool. I'm well, a little more obsessed with Doctor Who right now. Like I was watching, and I never cry during TV shows. I bawled my eyes out at one episode. I'm not going to spoil anything, but it's so sad. I w cosplay <laughs> so much to cosplay Tom. Tom. It's so awesome. <laughs> Someone was saying at uh, Candlelight Gardens, I remember the co the con conversation. I can't even talk today. Um, someone said they should cosplay Rarity's couch and walk around with Rarity. And whenever Rarity's, like, pretending to be dramatic, like, have her jump on top of him. Just, like... <laughs> Like, the couch that she brought oh, with her. Horror. Wouldn't that be funny? Oh, my God. I think that's, like, the funniest thing ever. <laughs> Brilliant. There, okay, yes. wait, real quick. I wanted to mention something. Okay. Oh, yeah. Spike Firemane has told me that if I can reach a 1,000 followers, he is going to make this wicked awesome Discord lamp that you may have seen in the episode with Fluttershy. <laughs> and I want to see this lamp. I don't care about having... A super amount of followers, but I want the lamp. I want to see it, and of course, you know where it's gonna go. Charity. So follow me for charity. Do it. Do it. Do it. 
but yeah. Okay, let's see. So what's this? Unless plushie you don't land? like Batman, then don't don't bother. Aww. What's this plushie line about? Ooh. Okay. So the new plushie line, it it looks like it's pronounced um Nikki or N- I don't know Nikki. something like that. Nike. Nike. To, something Nike. Japanese maybe. Yeah. So they have they're making new plushies which. In my opinion, they all look really cute except the biggest sized ones. Mm-hmm. They look a little weird, and I was hoping they were prototypes, but um, no. They're ugly. No. And um, yeah, they just look really awesome. And Funrise is going to release a Twilight Sparkle Alicorn plushie. So if you like cuddling with things with wings that poke you in the eye, maybe, get that! Wow! Yeah, not bad. Let's see. So, Funrise releases Twilight Sparkle Alicorn plushie. What? Yes, I just read that one. Oh, yeah. Sorry. I'm like, <laughs> distraction! Okay, sure, so we sure. love fine. We love fine. They've got, oh, it looks like we got new shirts here. Oh, my God. So, okay, bye. Emily gets to read how I put in parentheses what Classy. I describe the shirt as. <laughs> It looks like a work of art. It's really funny. So we got a Discord and Fluttershy shirt. In parentheses, she put classy. I don't even <laughs> look classy, so I might get that. A rarity <laughs> shirt. Beautiful. It's Twilight. Beautiful. I'm sorry. What is this? Twilight what? Oh, my God. I meant to <laughs> sparkle. I, oh, Twilight shirt. No, I meant to write shirt. Don't read that. <laughs> she put a naughty word on accident. Um, it, But it's beautiful. It's, it's beautiful. <laughs> Raven Ash beat in Cutie Mark. <laughs> you did it again. It's awesome, though. Um, okay, I be- think I'm having an issue typing. Oh, my. Um, Philly At least you're not reading it. Yeah, I'm glad. I stopped myself for a second. Like, wait, what? <laughs> um, a weather style Raven Ash shirt. Ooh, Valentine's Day shirts. Um, Doctor Who's Rarity and Spike. Pinky flying with balloons to visit Raven Ash. A love shirt with Rarity and Spike. An 8-bit Rarity. <gasps> and when I say love shirt, you know, like the I Love New York shirt, it yeah. has like the big L and then it has a heart Aww. with Spike and Rarity in it. And then, yeah. That is so the cute. And the E. That's so cute. Ugh. So cute. I have a sore throat or I'd be yelling a lot more. <laughs> it's okay. Yeah, okay. We also have, apparently we have got a derpy scarf, a Luna scarf, and a Luna beanie. I am so excited for this because I love scarves. Yeah, oh my gosh. I, I love beanies. The, uh, is that weird? Yeah, maybe. I don't know. It just the, depends on how it looks. The awesome thing about it is they're very nonchalant with the pony thing. Like, mm-hmm. I mean, if you want to go overboard pony and have everyone know to talk to you because pony. But um, <laughs> the derpy scarf just has her cutie mark on the corner of the scarf and it has a Luna face, which is really mm-hmm. adorable. And I'm excited. Yeah, oh my gosh, that'd be so cute. Ugh, so cute. Okay, so, random merch. So, oh my god, this is like the best thing ever. They've got My Little Pony Friendship's Magic Bottles. Yeah, Emily and I were complaining because my little sister just grew out of bottles. And Yeah, and then Lucy, she is now with Sippy Cups. It's like, really? Now we have to get the bottles for herself? That's just weird. <laughs> Darn it. Maybe I'll just like take a picture of me like sipping on and like, Hi, guys. That would be so <laughs> lame, but it'd be kind of cool. I don't know. And then pony <laughs> notebooks. So, for all you kiddies who are in school, you can get little notebooks and show off. Maybe you can start a conversation in class. Be like, hey, no, hey. not even if you're a little kitty. They have oh, really know. awesome ones. Apple Bloom is on one. I want oh, it. That's so cute. When I start when I start up college here soon, then I might get them. And I know everyone's going to look at me funny. Like, oh, who's this chick? Dude, when I was doing I... my college application here the other day, they asked me what my favorite TV shows were. I'm like, oh, oh no. That's when you go, I really like to watch anything on Discovery Channel. <laughs> I super uh, shark week. Like, right? sharks. Oh, yeah. So well, I put my little pony and I got accepted. So, I don't mind. Apparently. Um, yeah, that's pretty awesome, right? Yeah. I actually, like, I sat there for a second, like, I don't know. Like, I even asked my mom, mom, TV shows. Do I put My Little Pony? And she's like, I don't know, man. It's all up to you. That's better than me. I end up putting Batman the animated series. <laughs> I, I, like, put, like, 
I put My Little Pony, Fairly Odd Parents, and I just ended up saying, in parentheses, cartoons. And I, I oddly enough, got accepted, so. Nice. Yeah, that's hilarious. Yeah, I use notebooks so often, because I feel like Twilight, I write everything down before I type it to send to Emily, so. Maybe yeah. I'll go find a notebook. You should do it. Okay, so, hot topic. What's going uh, on in hot okay, topic land? Okay, okay, this is, I'm so, so excited about this, <laughs> and you best be excited, too. Like, get your excited face on. I got it right now. <laughs> okay, mine, too. Mine's really scary, so get oh me, my. see me. I am the knight, and I am Batman. Don't, don't take my name. <laughs> don't take my name, or I will find you, because I am Batman. Okay, so, um, hot topic. Hot topic seems to have, like, the neatest things, um, so you can now pre-order the Funko Doctor Hoof. I'm going to call it Hoof because I know it bothers some people. Hoof, hoof, hoof. Um, and Fluttershy. And this is what I found kind of confusing. Mm-hmm. With the vinyl do- Doctor I'm just so upset about this because it really confused me. With the vinyl Doctor Hoof, um, you can pre-order it, but you may get the special 1 in 42 translucent looking Doctor Hoofs. Mm-hmm. And... Uh, then there's half of them are Doctor Who that's normal with a red tie, and then the other half is normal with a green tie, and I don't know if it's just that I like the plain normal one with the red tie, or I'm just crazy, (laughs) but I don't like the whole, you don't know what you're gonna get. That is actually really cool. So, like, um... I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna pre-order a couple, and hopefully, maybe I can get my hands on a translucent one for another charity thing for Peggy Sisters Live because that's what I've got my eye out for. And yeah, um, yeah right now yeah. We're, both, we're looking for some things we can do for charity. Yes. But yeah. So yeah. Um, we can go to conventions here, but um, we actually just want to kind of point out um a specific convention. Which is coming up in like a, let me say, twenty days, like twenty days here. It's uh, called yeah, Las so Pegasus Unicorn. If you've heard of it, I think maybe talking about the most recent convention makes more sense than the ones that are in like half a year. <laughs> well, this one's in uh, two thousand fifteen. No, I'm kidding. Um, no, That's but like um, the Superman movie. <laughs> yeah, but um, yeah, that one's coming up, and they actually just released a schedule. But um, I'm gonna read you guys. The official guest list now. We've got all of the guests now. But uh, we've got Tara Strong, Amy Keating Rogers, John DeLancey, um, Daniel Ingram, Sandy Morrow, uh, Nicole Oliver, Lee Tokar, Gary Chuck, which is a diamond dog, Mark Oliver, um, Michael, I don't know if I'm going to say this right, Michael Dangerfield. You're not. Dangerfield? Rayburn. 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 <laughs> um, sorry. Um, Andrew Francis, Mark, oh my gosh, Mar- Mar- Mark Hay? Oh my god, it's Gilda. Gilda! Gilda! We'll say that. I feel bad. I, I cannot pronounce these names. Um, Don't worry about it. We've got Sakura again. Brenda. Um, we got she, Okay. She is so sweet. When we <laughs> met her, awesome. we brought her extra cards with Sakura on them, stopped everything she, she was doing, dropped everything, got up, and goes, give me some sugar girls, and <laughs> yeah. hugged both of us. She was so sweet. <laughs> she was like, so awesome. I, recommend trying to meet her she's so nice she was so nice it was oh my gosh so yeah we gave them extra decor cards for people to get signed the chatty box says just say the character names and we'll know who they are yeah sorry oh yeah and i feel kind of guilty i went off on these things and we got okay we got big mac peter nail flim san vincent trevor duvall who's fancy pants hoity toity iron will and the instructional film announcer uh, oh yeah, okay, um, M.A. Larson, which, <laughs> I, I really hope you guys know who he is, because that's who we have on later today. Uh, we got who? M.A. Larson! Sounds familiar. I, th- I think I've heard of him before. I don't know. I recall a picture being posted of us on his Twitter, though. <laughs> With our diamond dogs, oh god. He has Amy Keaton Rogers only signs autographs for girls with tails. <laughs> That was great. Um, Tabitha St. Germain, Rarity, Luna, Nightmare Night, or, Night, yeah, Nightmare and Moon, and, um, Granny Smith, Andrew Libman, Pinkie Pie and Fluttershy, Michelle Kreber, Apple Bloom, and Singing Voices Sweet Apple Bell. Bloom. Apple, Apple Bloom. Apple Bloom. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Once you showed me that. <laughs> oh, my God. I know. Uh, <laughs> that was the best. Uh, Kathy Westlux, Spike and Mare Mare, Britt McKillop, uh, who's also Princess Cadence, 
Megan McCarthy, one of the writers, and Andy Price, which um, Andy Price is the comic book artist. Oh my gosh, no way. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, I totally <laughs> freaked, out, freaked right there. out. Um What about Katie Cook? Okay, um I don't her? I don't know about Katie Cook. No, I know. We got I mean, Andy Price though, that is awesome. Watch. You're gonna get stalked, Andy Price. Uh oh. Hardcore. For charity, though, so hardcore. Hardcore. But, yeah, so you guys should definitely try to make it to Las Pegas this Unicorn. Um, Sandra and I are most likely going to be there. We, oui, because I live really close. Yep, and I'm, I'm going to fly over. Yes, I miss my Emily way too much. Yes, we miss each other way too much, and we just, we have to go. We've got to go. we got to get more cards signed. we got to see each other. we got to... Cosplay. We gotta oh we gotta cosplay. We gotta do so much. We gotta party like massive. We're gonna party so hard, you guys. If you are there, you should tweet us and you should find us. Because we'd love to see you. But yeah, yes. so <laughs> Oh sorry, I'm like blanking because I took okay. X out of um the chat because it wasn't working for me and now oh, my no. name is being used. Uh oh. What? I wasn't listening. <laughs> I, I don't really know. Oh, I'm really trying don't. to figure it out. No, they're talking about how um, M.A. Larson is a lie, so they're referring to him as Cake. <gasps> From Portal. Gotcha. That's so I've funny. never played Portal. I don't understand it. Aw. It's so funny. Oh, I love Portal. I love Portal, guys. So, it's like... How do I put it in like the shortest way possible? It's like... Basically, a bunch of tests where they like put you with, through all these puzzles dealing with portals. Like... No, oh, I'm gonna put a portal here, and if I put a portal over there, then I'll end up over there. And if I go through this portal, I'm gonna fall over the shield, or I can use this, and I can move this cube and put it on top of this button and move this laser, and da 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 da. Sorry, that was nerdy. But anyways, so you guys should go to Las Pegas as Unicorn. Please go. Do it just because the name <laughs> is fun. That is like the coolest thing ever. Okay, I signed back here? into the chatty box, guys. I am now Sandra, just with the W. <laughs> I'm E. I'm just the letter E. I don't nice. Know why. Very nice. Yes. Um. Someone in the chatty box asked if Emily Larson's gonna be in the show soon. Yes. He, uh, she's. I said she. Ugh. Um. He's gonna be on in about fifteen minutes, actually. So yeah. yay. So um. I'm gonna play off our music of the week. Sound good? Shoutouts first. Oh. Oh. I gotta pull out shoutouts. Sorry. I made it so pretty. You did make it pretty, and I like don't have it. Hold on. Sorry. You're gonna, like, see all my stuff now. Ugh. Don't look at my pictures. Don't do it. Don't do it. Sorry, this is terrible. Okay, there we go. Sorry. Twitter shoutouts! Yee! Nice so, sound. These are last week's shoutouts because I felt bad because we didn't have a show last week and I didn't want to re-ask for them and just trash these, so... Everyone on this Twitter shout-out list has my okay to follow. They are completely awesome, very supportive uh, supportive of the show. And Fluttershy is looking at them like, oh, my gosh, I'm so happy they're hanging out right next to me. <laughs> so follow them. You'll get a kick out of them. I follow oh, yeah. them, if that means anything. <laughs> so, um, yeah, this is our Twitter shout-out. Every Saturday we will ask for five more. And if you are, if you hit all of the criterias, like not posting naughty pictures, we'll oh put you here. Oh. <laughs> it's fine. I was done rambling. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay, I'm gonna pull up the picture now. Sorry, it's like dumb looking. I'm like trying to pull it up just the right way. And go, go back, picture. Sorry, I like just. There. Your OC looks so upset. It's because I can't type with hooves. I'm like, well, wait, seriously? I just look stupid. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, Ruth knows me so well. <laughs> oh my god. Okay, I'm gonna pull up, actually, music. Which, I guess I shouldn't have even pulled up the picture. Because... Everyone's asking who's your, who you were shipped with. Oh, that, that's me. I'm shipped with uh, Solrak. Everyone knows that. Guys. Solrak is awesome. Everyone should be knowing about that. Come on, guys. You s don't you read my Twitter? We're, we're, like, officially shipped. I mean, we're shipped. Like, you know what I mean. Let me pull up the music. Music, come on faster! Come on, Skidaloo. 
All right, so Ulrak is a legend. He is a legend. No, that's what, what the chatty box says. He is a legend. He's awesome. How do you think I'm a legend? Um, I don't know. Um, okay. So, first song, it's Sim Gratina, Small Wings, Enlightened Remix. And I can't hear the music, so if you feel like typing to me, do it! So that was my little sample of small wings. Oh, it's so cute. She's so cute. I know her face is adorable. It's a little odd, it's, but it's adorable. It's like she is like drank like eight Red Bull and sees another one. Basically. That has my face. Alright, so this song here is <gasps> it's called so Lunar pretty. Song. So it's by Andy Phelan. I'm watching you rise in the full She looks really pretty in this. Soul Rack joined the channel. Oh, hey, he missed the talk about him. Oh, yeah, we were all talking about you, Soul Rack. Now he's gonna get. What, what are you talking about? And you will never know what we said. It's still a unless you Unless you watch this on YouTube later. Oh, crud. No, okay, we should watch this song. <laughs> my little sample of Lunar Song by Andy Phelan. Alright, so I'm gonna pull out this. Come on YouTube, work with me. Don't like be awkward and show off the Super Bowl signal in the corner. Alright, oh, by the way, Chatty Box, who's winning the Super Bowl? We've got MLP Fighting His Magic, the Fluttershy stage theme. Ba -da -da. <laughs> <gasps> Yay, the Ravens! Made me excited. Ooh, Bane.
Any bots would like to know the name of the song? Oh, um, yeah, it's uh, Fluttershy's Fluttershy stage theme. MLP finding his magic. Yeah, like Solrak, kinda... someone would like to have a quick word with you in the chatty box. Wait, what? No, I don't know. <laughs> what just happened? It it was Wub, so I figured it'd be okay. Uh oh, Wub. All right, so this business next song... reasons. I guess. Oh my. <laughs> so no, that's um. Never mind. I'm gonna stop talking. It's okay. It's a D note of the apology. This is a little bit of an older one, but I really like this. I just love how someone just virtually bowed down to Soul Rack. <laughs> As they should. Steve Holt. Ponies look sad. They give puppy dog faces. It's cute. Oh my god, that song is really awesome. I really like that song. All right, so next song, pulling it up. Ah, okay, there we go. Um, it's down with the ponies. See, I think it's Cyro, the wolf. It's by Dusty Cat, though. I told you I'd add this, and I did. Thank you! I liked it so much, Dusty sent it to me when I was bored. And who doesn't love Dusty? Of course, exactly! God! Oh, wow. <laughs> oh my god, I love it. <laughs> yep, that was my little sample of it. Ah, uh, wasn't that awesome? I actually, like, disturbed. Alright, so, I'm sorry. This isn't a song, I'm sorry. I think everyone's gonna, like... No one's gonna get mad at you if that's what you're thinking. It's, it's from um Eile Monty. It's her video. It's called I'm Apple Bloom, I'm Sixth, and I'm a Beauty Queen. <laughs> this is making me sad already. It's <laughs> it's it's like Apple Bloom uh, It's like dub. honey boo boo. It is. It's exactly what it is. I'm Apple Bloom. I'm, I'm drinking my go go I'm juice. A beauty queen. <laughs> Those are the fowls must be crazy if they think they're gonna be me, honey boo boo child. I'm a superstar, cause I do pie jumps. My grandma's nickname is Coupon Queen. I gotta have some beats to do my pageants with. I want to win. Does the chatty box, re box not really believe that soul rack? Cause I'm reading Twitter. It's really him. 
I don't understand. Like, like you got it. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. My special juice is gonna hurt me well. <laughs> <laughs> I love that part. Show the Help me well. <laughs> 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 I had more hoops so I can eat all these cheese puffs. Maybe I should check the videos before you post <laughs> I'm sorry. This is a bit disturbing in one of the comments. <laughs> Pegasus just live, trying to give you nightmares. I'm sorry. That should be our I'm slogan. Sorry. I'm sorry. I usually don't pay out videos like this, but Ali Monty picked. She just made a great video. I'm sorry. It's so funny. She's gonna help me win. <laughs> okay, I'll stop. All right, so, and here's like a quick little animated short that I had to pick out. Super duper adorable. We got Ily Monty voicing in it. It's um Philly musicians, so full musicians. No, no, don't start. All right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Now that I'm done with my composition. Oh my god. I think my heart melted. My heart just melted watching that. Alright, so those were songs and videos of the week. Woohoo! <laughs> Hooray! No, I'm kidding. Um, okay. Sorry, now I gotta, like, set up my stuff. Cause we're about to pull on M.A. Larson! Are you guys excited? M.A. Alicorn Larson! M.A. Alicorn Larson, yes. Exactly. Alright, so. Without further ado, let me pull up my Skype here. Skype! Okay, here we go. No, chatty box, we're not gonna yell at him. <laughs> Why would we yell at him? Uh, alicorn. Okay. I'm not mad about the alicorn thing, guys. I'm sorry. I'm really not. I made that video as that a joke. That was so funny. Everyone thought, it, like, a few people, like, they're like, man, she's really overreacting. I'm like, I'm, dude, I'm kidding. Read the description. You think Some I, people can't pick up sarcasm. Do you think I really cry like that? Like, I, like... Like, I, like, squeaked so loudly. I don't cry like that, guys. I cry, like, in a cute manner. Not that... I did that just for giggles. Like, even my sister who recorded me doing that, she, like... You could tell in the video, she was, like, giggling at me. Mm -hmm. like, and chatty box, no, I don't know of that. Sorry, I have no thoughts about it. Thoughts about what? Just... It's in the chatty box, don't yeah. worry. Okay, I... I didn't look at the chatty box. Sorry, guys, I wasn't looking at the chatty box. I'm too busy about to pull up Emmy Larson. All right. Oh my god. Oh my god. This is exciting, guys. So hold on. Let me add people. Okay. Do do do. Sorry, I'm calling now. Hello? Hello. Hi. Hi! Hey! Welcome to Pay Sisters Live! Well, thanks. How are you guys doing? Pretty good. We're great. How, How are, are you? you? Not bad. Sweet. Did you watch well, the Super Bowl? Or, I don't know, if you're like, still watching? I watched most. I don't even know if it's over yet. It was almost over when I left. Who are you cheering for? I don't really care. Neither of them are my team, so I was, it was a really good game, though, I gotta say. Yeah, same here. <laughs> Yeah, I I honestly I voted for the Ravens just because Tara Strong said to. Really? <laughs> yeah. She, she put a we picture. We must listen to Tara Strong. <laughs> That's it. Like all my family members are like going for the other team. Like, well, I'm just gonna say yes to the Ravens because Tara Strong told me to. There you go. It's as good a reason as any. I agree. Uh, exactly. But I kind of giggled. Like I wasn't really watching it, but um, I like came upstairs when apparently like the lights stuff. When I oh, was... yes. <laughs> what was that about? That was amazing. It was like a half an hour. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, like, wasn't there, like, a scene where, like, the microphones went out, too, or something? Yeah, everything went out. The, well, the, not the camera. <laughs> half the lights stayed on, the camera stayed on, but the microphones went out, uh, half the lights went out. It was amazing. 
I just feel better about all the derps our stream has now. <laughs> yeah, I know. That's exactly what I was like. When I sat there, I'm like, man, even the Super Bowl staff, they mess up. Right. Makes me feel better. <laughs> and I bet their budget is a lot bigger than yours. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Exactly. My little <laughs> laptop here. Well worth the money. <laughs> but, yeah, so we wanted to we, like, ask you some questions. We have some questions for you. Is that all right? Okay. <laughs> Emily, would you like to start off? Uh, yeah, sure. Okay, so um, in My Little Pony, what character do you enjoy writing for the most? Um, my favorite regular character is Rarity. Um, mm, I love that. <laughs> I just love the uh, I love the characters who have, you know, she's got she's got a pretty good sized ego, but underneath it, she's <laughs> got a lot of heart. Mm -hmm. um, so that's a lot of fun, and you can give her really fun dialogue, like the scene where in um, Ponyville Confidential, where she confronts Sweetie Belle about stealing mm -hmm. her diary. She's so over the top and like over dramatic about it, <laughs> and that kind of dialogue is super fun to write. But she's saying it because she's hurt, you know. Like there's like real emotion behind it. Mm -hmm. um, so she's probably my favorite because you can really go over the top with her. Um, but I really like. I've gotten to write some really fun villains too. The Flim Flam Brothers were super fun because they're like, their whole goal is to confuse people, so they just yes, talk really they, fast. They actually made me very upset while I was watching with my sister. <laughs> they made you upset? Yes, I didn't want them to win. <laughs> oh yeah, I know. Like you would have thought, like it's like Good. a triumphant moment when they're working together and suddenly they win. You're like, wait, what? <laughs> Your heart just shatters. <laughs> no. Good. It should accomplish. <laughs> yeah, actually, that's my favorite episode. Oh, it thanks. is. That's Emily's favorite episode. She talks about it all the time. That's awesome. Yeah. That song is, like, spectacularly fun to write. I love that song. Oh, my gosh, yes. That song is so catchy. Daniel Ingram did such a good job with that. I couldn't believe it when the first time I saw it. I was like, oh, man, this is awesome. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's awesome. Pretty sweet. So, yeah, Sandra, did you want to? Yeah, out of all the episodes you've written... I'm guessing that might be your favorite one, but what would your favorite episode have been? Yeah, that one, and then um, that one just because of the song was, was mm. super fun, and those guys are super fun. Mm -hmm. uh, and I really like Applejack, too. Ooh, me too. Uh, but that one, or the Re Return of Harmony, was pretty amazing, too, because it was, it was a two-parter, and I had only done three episodes before that, so I was pretty excited. I was like, oh, man, it's awesome. I get to do an hour-long episode. That's great. And then... Um, and then it ended up being about this really super fun villain, um, and we got to go back and like have Twilight remember all the let read all the letters again and bring back in all the lessons she had learned over the course of the season. So that was that was really fun to write too. Oh my gosh, yeah, that was like a really touching moment too. It's something you can do in a two-parter. That's you can't, it's not as easy to do in a one-parter. You know, you have yeah. so much more time to develop things and really get to that point where she's at her lowest moment. Um, so I wish every episode was a two-parter. <laughs> yeah, don't we all? <laughs> yeah, I think we all might wish that. <laughs> yeah, like, the two-parters are always, like, the best episodes. It's hard to, especially in the first season when we had to, we had to get all six in, not every episode, but, like, as often as possible, we had to try to get all six characters in, and when you take out the commercials, you've got 22 minutes to do it, mm -hmm. and that's really hard to do, you know, six characters... To have them all have like a little bit of a story, a little bit of something going on, it's not it's not easy to do. Yeah, I can imagine that. Oh my gosh. So then in the second season they kind of relaxed that a little bit and we could focus more on like uh, you know, Fluttershy or whatever. Still try to have the others in as much as possible, but it wasn't as much of a it wasn't as important to get all six in. So letting them have their own spotlight for a bit. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah I really like that too. Um, so, um, when did you start writing for cartoons? Uh, it was 2005. It was when I moved to L.A. Um, I was living in New York, and I was writing, like, feature, like, independent features that would never get made. And uh, my wife got a job in L.A., so I came with her. Um, we moved out here, and I didn't really know what I was going to do. But a buddy of mine lived out here already. He's an animator at Cartoon Network. And he heard they needed writers on um, the show that he was on. And I had written, I had written an animation thing for him that was just an independent thing. Does that happen to be my gym partner's a monkey? 
Yes, that's the show he was on. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. That was my first job. I love that show. <laughs> oh, that was a good show. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I didn't really know much about animation, but he told me, he's like, watch some SpongeBob and write a couple SpongeBob. So I wrote two SpongeBob spec scripts, <gasps> just sort of like my own SpongeBobs. And I submitted them, and then they hired me based off of those. So that was my mm-hmm. first job. And then from then, it was just sort of like, you sort of meet this person here, or you meet the this guy, Chris Savino, who did uh, Boast, Boast, is that right? Boast Busters? Boast Busters? Yeah. Yeah. Um, he was on My Gym Partner is a Monkey, too, and recommended me to um, some people on Foster's Home for Imaginary Friends, which is where I met Lauren. Um, oh, so- yeah. That was kind of my second animation job. Was I got to do an episode of that. Ooh, so that, which episode it is just kind of. It's called Race for Your Life, Mac and Blue. Oh my god! <laughs> it was at the very end of the show, but the whole episode is Mac and Blue. Fin- they're they're like at the arcade, and they're getting really competitive, and they step oh, outside. Yeah. And they're like racing home. So the whole yeah, episode is just a race. Such a cute show. It was a great show. I really like that show. I wish I could have done more of them, but I didn't get on it until the very end. Mm-hmm. It should come back. Yeah. I think we all agree on that. Imaginary Pony back. Friends. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Crossover. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So this actually, I've always wanted to know, do you enjoy or just enjoy in general adding secret adult humor to the episodes? <laughs> if you're not the one who adds it, do you like the other ones that do? <laughs> Because I love yeah. watching it over and over again just to catch the little silly things. I think it's it's fun that people can do that. It's fun mm-hmm. that there's more there's hidden stuff in there. You know, I, I I was a lot worse about it when I like on my Jim Parsons Monkey. I really tried to get away with things, <laughs> like really stuff I shouldn't have. I just thought that was what you do, and then you wait for standards and practices to tell you not to. Oh. Um, by the time I was on My Little Pony, and I, it was like, okay, this show is not really, it's not really that kind of show. It's not, you know, it's so, it's so kind-hearted. Mm-hmm. I didn't really want to put anything nasty. There's still adult references. There's like, you know, a reference to an R-rated movie or something, but it wasn't any, it, not like nasty references, you know what I mean? Oh, yeah. There's one reference that I've always wondered. Which one? And the episode of Party of One... Where Pinkie yeah. Pie goes, what's in the bag? <laughs> Seven? <laughs> yes. Oh, oh my God. God. Right. I've been bothering Emily since I saw that episode. She showed my mom. <laughs> I forced my mom to watch it. And my mom, I was like, Mom, they put all this humor in it. Like, the spike is, I mean, the punch has been spiked. And then she was like, yeah. Then they were referencing Seven. <laughs> That's so we, I, they... I don't know. Megan, Megan McCarthy wrote that one. Yeah, you'd have to ask her. It sure sounds I, like. Oh Definitely gosh. need to find that pink <laughs> Oh my gosh, I'm but glad it's... like we're not the only ones who like caught that. <laughs> There's a lot of I think all the writers really enjoy putting in stuff like that. Um, yeah, it sounds fun. Yeah, it is like fun. Sneaky spy work. So, um, are there any other cartoons that kind of influenced your writing style? SpongeBob was pretty big because honestly, before I started writing for my Jim Barnes Monkey, I didn't really know much about animation. I mean, I watched stuff when I was a kid. I grew up on Bugs Bunny and uh-huh. um, Transformers and stuff like that. Like, I watched as much animation as the next guy, but I was not really an aficionado. And um, I didn't really know much about the current state of animation when I started. I didn't really know what was on the air. I didn't, I'd never seen SpongeBob before. And so I started watching it, and I was like, oh, my God, this is a great show. This is really funny. Um sophisticated and you know really good characters really you just get oh, the yeah. characters immediately oh yeah That's it's- i found out that adults put funny little things in it like with the episode where they cuss but it's a dolphin yeah noise. yeah yeah yeah. Oh, yeah i really thought a dolphin noise meant a bad word in their language <laughs> <laughs> um so it was i, I guess not so much animation, they're more like, you know, I grew up watching sitcoms. Mm-hmm. Um, I guess a lot of, t- I watch a lot of TV, but I didn't really know a whole lot about animation. Well, if you watch a lot of TV, what is your favorite TV show at the moment? You don't have to say My Little Pony. <laughs> <laughs> You're not obligated, it's all right. My, pa- my favorite TV show ever is, uh, it's called The Wire. Um, it was on HBO. I've heard of that, yeah. It's absolutely fantastic. 
Um, but Fantastic. It's kind of, you sound it's like Dr. Of, Who. <laughs> <laughs> it's the opposite of My Little Pony. How about that? <laughs> yeah. really nice. Or dark, um, dramatic. Um, I'm trying to think what else I watch. I watch a lot of really crappy TV. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> it's okay. Like, the only thing I watch is cartoons. And, you really? know, trying, yeah, and trying to, like, you know, compare interests with other 19 year olds, it's a little hard because I'm like, oh, I like Fairly Odd Parents and SpongeBob and My Little Pony. And they're like, oh, well. Uh, and aren't you so excited for Powerpuff Girls? <laughs> yes. <laughs> then my friends are I- like, oh, well, I like watching Scrubs. But I thought there was a pretty big following at that age of animation. Is that not right? Uh, there is if you find the right people. Yeah. Twitter helps. Twitter helps. <laughs> oh, yeah, Twitter. like, at my workplace, there aren't very many uh, anime, like, cartoon lovers. Right. Do you, get a, do you find a lot of people who watch, like, Adult Swim and that kind of thing? Or the Fox shows? Yeah. Yeah, yeah basically. Yeah, like, someone at work... I was, like, quitting Spongebob, like, dude, that's for, like, little kids. You need to grow up. And I just gave him an evil never. look. Never. You gave can never look. stop watching Spongebob. Never. Yeah, I totally agree. It's really good. They're missing Definitely. out. Exa- yeah, exactly. I'm like, oh, dude, you're kind of lame. It's like, when you go on the beach, what else are you going to sing besides stepping, stepping on, on the beach? beach. <laughs> 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 well, I enjoy I enjoy watching My Little Pony. I watch all the episodes, you know, if they're not mine or whatever. I watch them all. Oh, really? Like, really yeah. Um, do you and, and the, like exactly what you were saying earlier about the references, I watched the, um, oh, what the hell is it called? The one with Discord. Oh, and, yeah. Uh, Harmony? Or wait, what? No, the, the recent one. Oh, uh, Keep Calm and Flutter On. Yes. Uh, and Dave wrote it, and I was watching it, and there's a reference in there to like an old movie from like the 40s. And I got it. I was like, oh, man, I know that line. So I tweeted him about it, and it's like it's fun. It's fun for me to see that stuff too. There's references in there that I pick up on. So yeah, that's really cool. Yeah, it's a I good show. Could, yeah, I wish I could pick up on them a little easier. <laughs> I'm like, oh wait, what? <laughs> a little slow with that. Okay, so but then, well, but then someday you'll see that movie, and you'll be like, oh my god, that's the My Little Pony line. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, wait, where have I heard this before? What? Yeah, this exactly. movie from the '40s stole this from My Little Pony. <laughs> <laughs> Twilight said that. <laughs> I can confirm it with Tara Strong. <laughs> <laughs> Do you enjoy going to all the brony conventions? Yeah, it's super fun. I've been to, I've only been to two. I went to Midwestria uh, in September, which was absolutely awesome. I mean, it was, it was pretty small, but that was kind of great. It was like, you, yeah. by, the, by the time the two or three days were over, you really knew everybody there. It was really cool. You got to say, see everybody, say hi to everybody. Um, and the venue and the hotel was all one and the same. So everybody was kind of just in the same place. Um, and then I went to a much bigger one, which was Equestria LA, which was also super fun. Of course. Yes, that's where we found you and started. That's why I got to meet you guys. That's why it was so fun. <laughs> okay, wait. Okay, so I have to ask now. Did you notice whenever Sandra stared at you? Yeah, I am. Um, <laughs> First, Emily was like, oh, my God, it's M.A. Larson. And I was new to the fandom, so I'm looking for Emily Larson. So I'm looking for a girl, and I'm directly staring at you. That's she's hilarious. Like, no, no, it's M.A. Larson. I'm like, oh, I've been staring at him the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> what, behind that guy? <laughs> oh, that's really funny. No, I did not notice. Yeah, and there was, like, another point. Like, and she did it a couple times. She would stop, and she'd stare at you and do, like, an awkward wave. Like, you're scaring him. Stop. <laughs> That's really funny. It was a lot of fun. <laughs> I met you guys because somebody, and um, I can't remember who, I took a picture of you guys when Amy Keating Rogers was signing for you. Yes, Emily and saw that. It, <laughs> and some guy was like, hey, that's so-and-so and so-and-so. And I was like, oh, wow. And then we met. That was really cool. Oh, yeah. And I said I was going to find you and give you a hug. Yes. That, that was difficult. That was we found fun. out you don't dance. No. <laughs> yeah. That's true. That, that was, was super fun. Yeah. And then I'm going to go to the Vegas one. Yeah, days. we're I, we're I'm almost positive that we're going to be there, so yeah, I'm excited. It, cool. Yeah, we're uh, working on it, like getting over there, so. As of now, I'm only going to be there the first day. I'm I'm trying to figure out a way to go for two days, but I don't know if I'm going to be able to. Mm. That's all right. So, as long as I you mean, can go to one, you know. Yeah. They're really fun though. I mean, it's it I got to say it's um it it's sort of like uh, particularly at the the interview 
or not the interview, the, um, what do you call it? Uh, Panel? Autograph, the autograph things. Oh, the autographs. Where people are kind of coming up and talking and you kind of hear the story. I like asking people, how'd you get into this and how did you discover this and whatnot? And it's really amazing how a show about friendship has really created through, you know, the internet part of it, friendships. You know, I've, there's so many people I've spoken to who are like, I met, I met all my friends through this show. Um, and I think at Equestria LA, if I'm not mistaken, there was a marriage proposal, wasn't there? Yeah, uh, yes. I mean, two people who met because of the show. Yes, uh, that was so, so cute. Beautiful. It's so cool. It's like uh, you, you talk to the to people and you see how much the show means because it's brought people together. And it's like, wow, it's like not just a dumb cartoon. It's like actually did bring people together. It's really cool to see. And it's fun to talk to people and hear their stories about how they got into it. When that. Yeah, I, I feel like they should do what Rocky Horror Picture Show does and just have everyone dress up and sing in the theater. <laughs> Absolutely. That would, be, that would be great. Like cut just together all the songs. Play. Uh, yeah. Make a music video for it. <laughs> maybe it'll maybe once the show is canceled, it'll keep on like in that van. Oh my Midnight goodness. showings at movie theaters and things. That would make me really sad. Oh my goodness. Ah, no. Oh yeah, don't talk about the show canceling to Emily. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm like, oh geez. Like, um, to be honest, when I found out about Alicorn, I thought that meant that the series was gonna be done after that. I'm like, right. oh no, oh you know, I'm like, well, I'm okay with the Alicorn thing. I just, I just don't want them to end it. I just, you know, <laughs> and then I was like venting to like my little sister about it. Like, I just don't want to do with ponies ended. Like, that's kind of sad, but <laughs> I can't talk about any of that stuff. No, that's we know. Yeah, yeah. Okay. they're not in the questions. It's okay. But yeah, so um, so did the fan base kind of take you by surprise? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it took everybody by... I think it took you, the fan base, by surprise. <laughs> um, yeah, completely. I mean, I've I've been writing for animation for something like eight years now. Mm-hmm. And nobody... I mean, there is... Like, nobody cares about who writes cartoons. Uh, even the executives who work for the networks don't care who writes for the cartoons. Like, nobody cares. And so to have a situation where, you know, there are people who watch it so closely and pick up the references. There's, I think most shows I've written on, I put references in, but it's mostly just for my own entertainment because I don't even know if anybody's even watching it. You know, you don't get any kind of yeah. feedback at all. <laughs> and then all of a sudden you got this show and you're getting feedback all over the place. It's really cool. It's, it's amazing. And like I said, to see that it actually creates genuine friendships for people like around the world. Our chatty um, box is saying that they care. <laughs> there you go. We um, definitely care. But it's it's definitely unique. I mean, there's I've written for a lot of shows and, and never had any kind of feedback from people watching it at all. So it's pretty shocking. It's surprising. And it's cool. But it's weird too, because the first time I ever heard about Bronies was I was it was the story meeting for I think I may be wrong about this, but I think it was Secret of My Access or it might have been Super Speedy Cyber Squeezy. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. Um, cause there's so long between when you write an episode and when it airs. And so I didn't even hear about you guys until I was over half done with season two. You know what I mean? Oh yeah. Um, I'm sure like right away you're like, um, what? What? <laughs> yeah. This? Yeah, exactly. Lauren showed me. Lauren was the first one who told me about you guys, uh, at the story meeting. She's like, here, you got to check this out. And she, you know, sent me some links and things. Oh. The first one where I knew, like, oh, wow, this is bigger than just, like, a little laugh was, it was pretty early on. She sent me a link to, um, it was, like, a Russian day camp, and all oh. these dudes, like, there's, like, 50 guys, teenage boys, in the middle of the wilderness in Russia, and they're doing, like, arts and crafts and things. It's a really long video, but about 10 minutes into it, they kind of go around to these dudes with guitars, and they start singing Winter Wrap-Up. So there's like oh there's like ten ten fifteen of these guys in their like thick Russian accents and then they oh, know the words and there's guys playing guitars and it's like I was like oh my god they're singing winter wrap up in Russia this is uh this is this is huge it's like way That's bigger awesome. than I thought that is like the coolest thing ever is that on YouTube yeah <coughs> we'll definitely have to link people to it yeah <laughs> like, I gotta find that I'll look for it right now and I'll send it to you oh yeah thanks um. But that was the first time where I was like, oh, wow, this is, 
this is big. Um, and then, yeah, on Twitter, like I get followers from you know Singapore and Australia and just like everywhere. It's crazy that around the so world. Cool. Yeah, when I'm on Twitter, I get so confused because time zones. Yeah. They don't like the internet. <laughs> right. It's true. Very true. But uh, yeah, so um, do you have like a favorite um main sex pony, just in general? Um. I mean, my favorite to write is Rarity, but my favorite, just personality-wise, is probably yeah. it's probably Applejack. Do you um, compare you yourself mostly to Applejack? What's that? Do you compare yourself mostly to Applejack? I don't. Uh, <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's, it's hard to say. She she reminds me a lot of a, a friend of mine, mm. um, who's just like such a good, solid person, and I just get that vibe off Applejack. She's just like so such a good. She's honest. Yeah. Like she's the one you want around. Yeah. Um, oh yeah. They, I mean, they all have their their attributes. Do you have a favorite cutie mark crusader? Interesting. Um, I know they're all cute, but you can't say all of them. If I had to choose, I would probably say Apple Bloom. <gasps> That's who I cosplayed oh, at. Nice. <laughs> yeah, Emily and I were Apple Bloom and Apple Jack at Equestria LA. There you On go. Sunday, yeah. That's it was awesome. really neat, yeah. Um, but okay, I are, found. are you gonna give Scootaloo a family? Uh, that's not up to me. You'd have to ask Megan about that. Darn, it's sort of conceptual stuff. I don't even know. I don't know where she comes from, though. I don't I'm either. <laughs> I, I think everyone. Uh, yeah, so I don't think no everyone, one knows. Oh no my gosh. Knows. I think okay. everyone just kind of like, oh well, now Rainbow Dash is sort of like. Her, her big sister, so they're gonna kind of like make a lot of, you know what I mean? Like put them together. I don't know. That's what I'm assuming. It sure, it sure looks like it. And Can it makes ponies sense. adopt other ponies? I mean, it, it looks that way, doesn't it? Yeah, I it kind of does. Well, that I'm, tw- I'm tweeting it out right now. I found it. Oh Woo! yay! Okay, sweet. <laughs> so, um, when you're writing an episode, how much creative freedom do you have? Uh, well, the, the way that the, um, story meetings work, it's really just the best of both. It's the best scenario for a writer because mm-hmm. you get, you get direction, but you also get freedom. It's mm-hmm. like perfect. So you go in and there's been a, a premise has been approved. Um, you know, we have, okay. So let me back up at the beginning of the season. We have a, um, writer summit where we all get together and, like the first one I went to, I didn't go to the season one writer summit because I don't even think there was one. I think it was just Amy and Lauren and Rob, who's the story editor. But the season two one, it was me, Charlotte Fullerton, Amy Keating Rogers, Cindy Morrow, and Megan McCarthy. And then Rob and Lauren, and we just brainstormed. And Lauren would say, So we want to have this overarching thing, or we want to make sure we have a spike episode, whatever it is. And then we just brainstorm. And then Lauren and Rob would write up these premises. Uh, which is about you know two three sentences of just the basic idea, which Hasbro will then approve or say, well, can you rewrite it and do this or whatever, and then you get your episode. So, a lot of the episodes I didn't have any say in what I was getting. Like the Discord one, I didn't, um, I didn't. They just said, here's your episode. Uh, but the, I, I reread the premise actually not that long ago for that one, and it's like three sentences long. It's really short. And so you don't have a lot to go on. So I go in for the meeting. It's me, Lauren, and Rob. It's just the three of us. And we spend the whole day just deciding, okay, what's the story going to be about? Do we want to go this way? Which characters we want in it? And then you just kind of break down the major, you know, there's two commercials. So at the, right before each commercial, you want to have a little bit of like a cliffhanger. Yeah. So you just try to figure out what the major plot points are and then what the scenes are. And then you go home with these index cards. And then from there on, it's just I'd sit there and flesh it out and fill it in and put in dialogue, and then um, then that outline gets approved, and then you write the script. So you get a lot of freedom once you've got the story in place. Um, but I would say not not many of not many of my episodes really changed much from the story meeting on, because you have such a strong structure in place. Mm-hmm. When you leave, when you leave Hasbro and you go home, 
everybody's agreed. Here's what the story's going to be. Uh, okay. So. Okay. That's actually really cool. Like neat. Cause I was actually really curious about that. Like the other day, I'm like, well, do they like just say, okay, I'm going to write this episode and kind of make up their own thing and kind of go with it. Or do they all agree on it? So yeah. It's really the best. I, I, I've worked on all sorts of different kinds of shows. Mm-hmm. And and I think this is the best format because you don't feel like you're being micromanaged with with notes and things, but you also don't feel like you're kind of flying blind. You don't feel like you're just like oh, I don't know if oh, I yeah, can do this. Oh yeah, that's the worst. <laughs> yeah, you have some guidance, you know, and and you've sat there with Lauren and Rob, and you've tried different things, and they'll say no, we're not going to do that, or yes, we'll try this, or you know, you just feel really confident when you leave with the story, and you know that the story is solid. So then you can just go kind of crazy with filling it in with characters and jokes and that kind of stuff. Yeah, that's, oh, that's so cool. That's awesome. Yeah, I've always wondered if it was difficult to write the little cliffhanger before the commercials, like on any show. That's where you start, really. Really? You kinda, yeah, you kind of start there and you work backwards, you know? Oh, wow. Yeah. Because yeah. you got to build up to that, so. Well, now I know. <laughs> that is, like, so cool. It was really hard with um, Cutie Mark Chronicles. Uh huh. Because that that's an episode where you're telling six backstories. Oh, oh actually, yeah. we have a fan question about that. Oh, cool. It's it's in our fan question segment. Oh yeah. Oh, le- uh, you mean later? Yeah, it's after a few more questions. We're oh, okay. getting there. Yeah, we're <laughs> we're getting there. There we go. <laughs> Do you have any advice for aspiring writers? Um. Yeah, I mean, I have advice. I don't know how useful it is. My best advice would, would be, it's really not useful at all, but it was useful to me, uh, which is own your own intellectual property. In other words, um, yeah. you know, when I got into it, I thought, oh, I could, this is great, I'll just be a writer, and this is how I'm going to make my living, it'll be great. But you really, it's, it's really difficult to make a living doing this. Mm-hmm. And every time you get a job, first of all, there's not a lot of staff jobs. Half the writing jobs in animation, including My Little Pony, are freelance, or maybe even more than half. So to get on a staff where you have a little bit of financial security, it's pretty rare. Um, So you get an episode of something, and then you're just freaking out, like, oh, man, what am I going to do next? Even if you get on a staff, you're thinking, okay, this season will be over in six months. What am I going to do after that? The whole time, you're just scared about where's my next check going to come from. And it's really, it's really an uncomfortable way to live, just constantly in fear of, like, where's the money going to come next? Uh-huh. Yeah. And so if you can, create your own show, create your own idea, come That's up with your own character. my dad always told me, because um, I'm a huge comic book fanatic, uh-huh. and he was like, just write your own. And I went to Comic-Con, and I was like, yeah, I love comic books. And he was like, you know what the best way to start? Make yourself into your own superhero. <laughs> that's a great. That's a great idea. I know. So I've been. It is. I'm gonna start that pretty soon. But I mean, it's it's the only way to go because then you can. First of all, you can make money, so you don't have to be so scared all the time. Yeah, but, I can but, think of another example, which would be Seth Rogen writing all of his movies. Yes. And then getting the main parts of them because he wrote them. <laughs> right. Absolutely. You can do it. I mean, you can make money working on other people's things, but it, it's it's scary and it's not as fulfilling. You know, you want to be able to control, here's what this is going to be like. Um, I'm not saying it's not useful. It's really useful to work on other people's things and you learn how to how to do it, but eventually you want to own your own intellectual property, own your own show, you know, and mm-hmm. then you can make then you make some real money. And I know it's not all about money, but it, it really helps to not be freaked out all the time about money so oh, yeah that's really good advice actually yeah you didn't think it was good advice i think it's really nice that's it just come up with your own stuff and just keep going be creative if be you're creative. not then choose a different career um no. <laughs> <laughs> then don't do st- i don't know okay <laughs> so, um fan questions oh, unless yeah. emily's gonna read because i oh, think yeah. you answered some of our other questions in your questions okay oh, maybe we did, question yeah. inception i yeah, do ramble better. No, it's okay. It's okay. We love when our guests ramble. Fan questions. So, do you believe in M.A. Larson? 
<laughs> you believe in Larson. <laughs> that I'm really was the first judgment. question. We'll, we'll have to see. I'm not. I'm not convinced yet. <laughs> we'll have to see. I believe in M.A. Larson. Come on. <laughs> the A stands I love for that thing. It, it, it makes me laugh every time I see one of those buttons. Just, I love I it, too. Hilarious. I thought that was the best idea that so anyone funny. in the fandoms come up with. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the whole chatty box yelling, I believe. I believe. <laughs> you know what's yeah. nice about it is, like, it could have been a really awful... I mean, it was just weird how the whole thing happened, and it could have been a really awful, you know, couple of days, but... I honestly think that with that button, it just kind of became lighthearted again. It became funny, and it became like, okay, you know, we can laugh. <laughs> yeah, I think it's really funny. Um, I won one of the buttons from Pixel Kitty. So oh, awesome. I'm so excited to get it in the mail. <laughs> That's great. <cool. laughs> I hope it gets here in time for the episode, because I'm, like, sitting in front of my TV screen with my button. <laughs> I'm, like, tweet a picture, like, hey, guys, I'm ready. That's the only way it'll backfire is if everybody hates the episode anyway. <laughs> Why did we believe in this guy? Oh. No. <laughs> I think with this fandom, no matter what happens, they will believe. Yeah, exactly. I don't Okay, I don't necessarily understand this question, but how is the this is in quotes, King of the Pegasus Sisters? Oh, oh, I can explain what that means. Okay. I did a um I did an interview maybe two weeks ago, last week, something like that, for the Bronies for Good live stream. Oh, thing. yeah, we love them. And they asked me, one of the last questions, they asked me if I was a Brony, if I'd consider myself a Brony. And I said, I think I'm more of a Pegasus sister. <laughs> and so they said it, that I was the king of, if Tara Strong is the queen of the Bronies, that I'm the king of the Pegasus sisters. And I'm like, cool. I'll oh, be the- we, give, we give you permission <laughs> to be the king of the Pegasus sisters. Or at least just the king of the Pegasus sisters live. Yeah, that's two. <laughs> That's what that means. King of Pegasus okay. Sisters Live. Yeah. <laughs> and then this question will only make sense if you're a fan of Arrested Development. It's not even a question. I Steve have never Holt. Seen Arrested Development. <laughs> Steve oh Holt. my gosh. You watch so much TV and you've never I know, seen it. I know. I'm desperate to see it. I've got all the DVDs. Okay, watch I just, it. I haven't sat down and watched it. It took my boyfriend two months to get me to watch it just because he was like, you'll love it. And I'm like, no, I won't. So, <laughs> I finally watched it, and I cannot stop. I've heard such good things about it. I'm, I'm really, I really want to see it. Well, I if haven't... you start it, what's really cool is I heard either in May or March that Netflix is putting out all of season four, which is five years after season three, and like what happened all at once on Netflix. Oh wow, that's awesome. Yeah, so maybe wait until season four is out, then you can and just blow through it all. I keep hearing all this stuff about how they're doing an Arrested Development movie. Ooh. I don't know if that's true or not, but I've heard a lot of stuff about that. There's so much good television right now. I really think we're in a golden age. Golden age of TV. Absolutely. Do you guys ever see Friday Night Lights? Yes. I I love that show. Sorry, I say no. (laughs) I watch too many cartoons, so wait, what is it about? Friday Night Lights? Well, it's, it's kind of about a high school football coach, but it's not really. It's it's about a um, there was a movie called Friday Night Lights about a Texas high school football team that's oh. one of the best sports movies I've ever seen. And oh, then, it made me cry. <laughs> yeah, they made a show out of it, but it's not really about football at all. It's just about really good characters and a really, I, it's mm-hmm. just awesome. Anyhow, yeah. that's what I'm I'm watching that now. Oh, okay, Sandra, is that the show you had me watch when I was over there? No, oh, I don't think so. Do you, there was like an, I remember. I don't. I don't want to say what the episode is about, but I remember you pulled up your laptop and we were watching some episode with they the coach in a football team. So I don't know. Maybe that's I think it. that's what Eric made you watch. I'm not yeah, sure. Yeah, that, that's what Eric made me watch. He's that like, hey, is not just... it. Okay, I don't know. I was, <laughs> that was my guess. Oh, nice can I, guess. Can I throw this in? Because I just saw a tweet from Lyra Reyes, who's the guy who identified you in the picture. Yeah. After oh, your credit yeah. words, too. <laughs> Lyra, if you're in the chatty box, hi. Hi, thank you for uniting us. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so anyhow, anyhow, no, I have not seen uh, Rest Development, but I will soon. Good. I want a tweet from you as soon as you realize how awesome it is. <laughs> There's only three seasons. It doesn't matter. <laughs> no, I mean, that's good. That means I can watch it fast. Oh, yeah. No, you can't. You'll watch it like a oh. hundred times. It's one of those <laughs> shows where they'll put like little things that are going to happen in the end of the episode. So when you rewatch it, you're like, oh, my gosh, they were talking about what's going to happen later. Love that. 
I That's love like, that. Yeah, really oh good. my gosh, you're gonna love it. Stuff that rewards, <laughs> I'm so excited for you. I love stuff that rewards like multiple viewings where you get like a whole nother layer the second time you watch it. I love that. Oh yeah, I'm on like the third time because first I started watching it with my boyfriend, then my sister, and now my mom loves it. Oh, very cool. I gotta watch it. I just gotta get on it. Yeah, it's really good. Okay, so this was another fan question. Mm -hmm. Referring to the secret of my excess, can dragons only grow via greed, or can they grow up naturally? Um, or is this unknown? Yeah, I don't know <laughs> if I'm qualified to answer that. I did <laughs> the only episode I kn I did on that subject is secret of my excess, and in that case, it was greed. Um, Most dragons are mean, so I wouldn't doubt it. Yeah. yeah. Maybe. Well, that's the thing is the more, gr the greedier, sp it fe fed on itself, the, the greedier Spike got, the more mm -hmm. beast, beast-like he got and meaner he got, um, which is kind of sad. Then you want yeah. him to stay a baby dragon forever. Yeah, that is Well, maybe he will stay a baby dragon unless he gets greedy. There you go. Control his greed and he'll stay cute little Spike forever. I, think I don't know. I mean, that. Uh, in that... that <laughs> That question you'd have to go to, I think, Megan and Jason. You'd have to go to the uh, the big picture people. Yeah, I will get the what's in the bag question answered. At a Metro LA, <laughs> I forgot to ask because I was so like, oh, my gosh, I'm here. I'm here. Oh, my gosh. Um, we were like, I want, I want that answer. I might tweet her. How about you tweet her because I bet she'll respond to you. <laughs> Should I? Yes. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Could you? <laughs> right now. Can oh my you gosh. tell her Peggy's Sisters Live would really like to know if you like the movie Seven? <laughs> oh my gosh. But yeah, so um, another fan question here was, um, what was the idea behind writing the episode Luna Eclipse? Um, hold on a second, let me finish. I can't multitask. Oh, sorry. <laughs> oh, that's fine. I'll read what the chatty box is saying. What the I hell was that episode either. called? It's called... Um, Party at One. Party, Party at One, right. Okay, thanks. It's like all my parties. I get to be schizophrenic <laughs> and have lots of friends. I've got a lot of party ones. Okay. Tweeted. Tweeted. What did you ask? Oh my gosh. <laughs> Thank you. Oh yeah. You um, I asked uh, what was the um one of the fan questions, um, what was the idea behind writing the episode Luna Eclipse? Oh, okay. Um See that was another case where like I got called in from a story meeting and I went in and that's where Lauren said, okay, you're doing the episode where Luna comes back. Um, and I said, okay, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't my choice. Well, you got a good episode then. I know I got really lucky. I was like, oh, cool. You know, this is mythology kind of thing. So, so I went back to when I heard that's what I was doing. I went back and I was like, I gotta, I gotta hear Luna's voice and know what she's all about. So I watched the pilot again and I was like, oh my God, that's it. She has like two lines. <laughs> There's no, there's nothing there, you know. Mm -hmm. um, so when we went for the meeting. Lauren had this kind of vague idea that she wanted. Have you guys ever seen Parks and Rec? Um, Might have. The uh, the TV show with uh, what's her name, Amy Poehler. Um, yes. Any, anyhow, there's a character on that show. I'd never seen it either, but there was a character on the show okay. that Lauren thought was really funny. Um, that she wanted to sort of base Luna on a little bit. And so I watched a bunch of Parks and Rec, and I did an entire draft of the script where she was in that vein. But uh -huh. then, then it, um, I don't even, I think it was Hasbro, actually, whose idea it was to make it more like she's just old-fashioned. Like she's, once, once we changed it, to me, it was, the, it was the sort of thing like where the, the guy gets out of prison and doesn't know how to work a cell phone. You know oh, what I yeah. mean? Like, he's been away for so that. long, he looks at the, the phone, and he's like, I don't know how to work this. It's the same with Luna. She's been away for, she's been in prison on the moon for so long. <laughs> yeah, she doesn't know that, she, she doesn't know that the royal can of life reading. She, she doesn't know you don't do that anymore, and she doesn't know all oh, the, yeah. all like, all not the old to be complete them. royalty. Yeah. So, it, she kind of changed into that. Like, she reverted back to how she was before she went to the moon. Um... And that led to, and then it was like a totally different kind of thing with funny stuff about her anachronisms, you know, like that kind of thing. So, mm -hmm. Yeah, that I was really like the way. And they wanted to do, um, before the meeting, Lauren wanted to do a Halloween episode, like what's the pony's version of Halloween? And so we came up with Nightmare Night, and then, well, it's a natural fit to put Luna in that, so. 
that was kind of yeah. Be I love holiday episodes. I think Halloween episodes of anything are my favorite. Yeah, and it's like something you got to do. You know, you got to. I know. I get excited for October, and my little sister is um, an October baby, so she gets all excited. And I was like, "Are you ready to go?" out on nightmare night she's like <laughs> i'm gonna have nightmares outside and i'm like no it from ponies marnie <laughs> <laughs> you gotta dress her up like star swirl the bearded <laughs> um, i <only laughs> totally want to her and um lucy were both cinderella last year yeah, well, yeah. yeah they yes both cinderella. <laughs> coincidentally and I told my sister, and I'm like, Lucy's going to be Cinderella. We're going to be twins. <laughs> I think the next uh, Halloween, I, or Nightmare Night, I want to dress Lucy up as a pony. She, Her favorite yeah, pony is Pinkie Pie. so uh, Hard to argue. Right? Yeah. Oh, it's, when you've got this, like, all these little girls in your family, it's like, oh, i got to do it. But, um, yeah, anyways, um, so next episode in the fan, or next episode, fan <laughs> questions, sorry, um. Okay, this is, um, about the Kitty Mark Crusader Chronicle one. Oh, yeah, I Yes. See. How do you handle structuring and writing episodes with multiple plot threads? Uh, it's, it's easier on My Little Pony because it's a half an hour long. I've, you know, I've worked on shows that are, like Spongebob is two episodes per half hour. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. And it's really difficult to do in a situation like that. There's just not enough time. Um, Cutie Mark Chronicles was difficult because, you know, like I said, you usually start the episode with what are the what are the plot points, what are the cliffhangers. And in that one, you know, the first cliffhanger is kind of, it's like a fake cliffhanger. It's like Fluttershy fl- falling out of the cloud, but nobody in the world thinks anything's going to happen to her. So it's it's sort of a cheat, but... It's the nature of having an episode where you're just telling six different stories. There's just no way to do a traditional three-act structure. So we had to find like a fake cliffhanger. Um, but it, that one was really hard. In fact, I, I think the vast majority of episodes I've written, with a couple of exceptions, it's been really hard to figure out how to structure it in a half an hour. Uh, there's just a lot to do. There's a lot of characters. Six main characters is a lot. If you look at other animated shows. Oh, I yeah, think- I- Definitely agree. I don't think a lot of them have that many main characters. Not to mention all the secondary characters that you want to. I can play only with think fun. of Rugrats with that many characters, but yeah, it's pretty rare. They're babies. Yeah. It, my most shows are usually like one, two, or three main characters, and then a lot of secondary characters. But this is six main characters, and then twelve secondary characters, and then villains, and you know, it's a lot. It's a lot of. Uh, Do you character. have a favorite villain? Probably Discord. Yeah. That, can't his, deny that. He's just super fun. The creepiest villain for me, though, would have to be Chrysalis. She scared me. Yes. Yeah, Even the design is creepy. Yeah. Oh, my God. Oh, yeah. I could definitely... She's... When I first saw her, like, when she first kind of made her appearance, I could... I don't know what it was. Like, the animation, it definitely, like, came off in a Powerpuff Girl kind of way. Oh, yeah. Maybe it was just me. I was like, oh, man, this is so cool. No, you're right. And the fight scene for sure was Powerpuff Girls. Yeah. I had that vibe. Chatty Box says Sombra is best villain. And I say (laughs) Queen Sandra is best villain. (laughs) (laughs) I've taken control of that name. So so out of the the Pegasus's live, are you the villain? I guess so. I always get a really graspy voice, like, half the time, so people make me say things that Raven from Teen Titan says. <laughs> and it's, it's not fun trying to mimic Tara Strong. <laughs> it's intimidating and weird. Sure Just, is. like, I met her at Comic-Con, and um, she gave a shout-out to my bronies on YouTube, and she made me sing the Twilight Licious song first. Really? In front of a bunch of people, yes. Oh, God. She's like, I'll do this for you, but you gotta do one thing for me. (laughs) I would be too, like, embarrassed. I'd be like, okay, I gotta go. Oh, I almost started (laughs) crying. (laughs) Like, when when I saw her, I'm like, I love you. Timmy Turner was the first crush I ever had. (laughs) Mine, too. Hilarious. Yeah, that's how Emily and I bonded. She lives in Ohio. I live in California. But we both had huge crushes on Timmy Turner. That's hilarious. That's a good thing to find him. <laughs> so that's nice for Tara, too. Oh, yeah, definitely. 
Mm -hmm. Okay, this question is actually a pretty good one. Your your fans really write good questions, and they all <laughs> everyone who wrote back had that little I believe an M A Larson pin on their picture. <laughs> <laughs> so in this, I've actually never heard this before, but in the past, um, your agent noted that, oh, in the past, your agent wanted you to use a, a pseudonym yes. when you were being credited for My Little Pony to not muddy your past work with the, in quotes, boy shows. Right. Has that changed since the show has a wild and broad fan base and success? Well, it's changed in that I, I, like, the, I like it better. <laughs> Uh, well, here's here's what happened is I got hired on Pony and Symbionic Titan, which is a show on Cartoon Network. Okay. At the, I got hired on those at the same time, and Symbionic Titan was the guy who created Dexter's Laboratory and. Oh my gosh. He did Clone Wars. Ooh, what does this um, button do? I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> yeah. No, I know what you mean. And when um, I found out the dad was Johnny Bravo, I almost had a heart attack. <laughs> <laughs> There's so many of those situations where the same voice actor, you like, you know. Oh, I know. Past. I I go through IMDb and I'm like, wait. Yep. Nathan Drake, what? You're invading <laughs> my Batman video games? You keep seeing the same people. It's true. Yeah, it's weird. I love it though. Um, so anyhow, this guy he created big time shows, and this was his new show, and it was a big action show, and it was a it was a really cool show. The premise was these three kids from a planet deep in the universe. Uh, the planet is like under attack, and the, they send the princess away to, you know, to save her with a guy and a robot, and the guy's like her bodyguard. And so the three of them end up on Earth, and they have to blend into a high school. He wanted to be like a John Hughes, like Sixteen Candles kind of thing, but with aliens, basically, and one of them's a robot. So it's got a really funny high school vibe to it, but with a lot of action, because like the other aliens would come after them and things. Well, anyhow, I, I was sure, and so was my agent, when I got these two jobs, that that was going to be the big success. Mm -hmm. And so he's like, you can't use your real name on My Little Pony because then it'll dilute your action. Most of my credits at that point were boy shows anyways, like action shows. Um, and then, lo and behold, Symbionic Titan got canceled after like one season, and My Little Pony turned into this thing where Russian guys are sitting around singing winter wrap-up. <laughs> And, I don't and think I, anyone wants My <laughs> Little Ponies to ever end. Yeah, so now I'm like, hey, I'm the guy from My Little Pony, not Symbiotic Titan. Mm -hmm. And I like it better. Like, I never particularly liked my name anyways, so MA is kind of cool with me. Um, so I changed my IMDb page to say that, and I got a book coming out next year, and it's going to be under that MA. I just like yeah. it better. You want to plug your book? Yeah, it's hard to plug because I don't have a title. But, uh, title is. <laughs> By M. A. Larson. <laughs> it's, it's entitled. It's to to be titled, but I got a release date. It's going to come out next May. Ooh, next uh, May, I'm going to get it and I'm going to read it and I'm going to review it on the show. Oh, awesome! Ooh, that awesome. sounds like really. Cool. I have no idea what it's going to be about, but I will. <laughs> <laughs> I really think Bronies will enjoy it because it's about. It has a lot in common with My Little Pony. It's not about horses, but it's about Good, a group. Real horses terrify me. <laughs> It's about a group of girls who are friends, and they go to this... Uh, it takes place in like a Grimm's fairy tale kind of world. Mm -hmm. And the whole idea is that witches are sort of taking over, and the only thing that can stop them is princesses. Uh -huh. So it's like a war between witches and princesses, and it's about these girls who go to this boot camp to learn to become princesses. That sounds... I'm going to bleep myself without actually saying <laughs> anything. Awesome! <laughs> <laughs> I hope so. I'm not kidding. I'm not just saying that to suck up. That sounds awesome. But it has a lot in common with My Little Pony because it's like at a core group of girls and it has, I hope it has that same sort of uh, kindness at, at its heart. You know what I mean? Like it's one of my favorite things about My Little Pony is it's not, it's not ironic and it's not like, cynical. Well, and, witches are like the only evil things that terrify me. They have taught yeah. me to be afraid of old people. <laughs> <laughs> and... If, if you read any of the, Disney, if you read like, if you read the real Grimm fairy tales, not the Disney I have, version, but like, I have read them. They're dark, man. They're like really dark. <laughs> they're scary. I know. I, to fit much. in the shoe first. Yes, exactly. Ah. <laughs> so so that's what I went with. I, I, I tried to go back. I can't get into detail about that. Yes. <laughs> but that's what I went with. I tried to get away from the Disney version of it and try to go back to the Grimm's version where it was le legitimately scary. 
Um, so it's supposed to be kind of like the vibe of Harry Potter, like the first ones before they got really dark. Um, so it's sort of that age, you know what I mean? It's like, it's not quite, well, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow, that's really so. cool. I'm excited I'm, for that. I'm very excited. I, I love books. <laughs> I mostly read um, Stephen King. Yeah, Stephen King's awesome. Yes, he is. Even if you've seen a picture of his house, he has, like, gargoyles on it. Like <laughs> I have not is, seen that. That's awesome, he, though. He lives in Maine, and he bases all of his books in Maine. Yes, he does. And, yeah. They're, ah, I'm reading Cell, which is a zombie one by him. We're kind, it's kind of zombie. You answer your cell phone, you go crazy, and yeah. What's it called? Cell. Just like cell phone. Oh, Cell. That. It's really good. Huh. This is like my third time reading it. He's got a new, his, he had a huge book called Under the Dome that they've just turned into a mini series. I know my mom was telling me about that. She is so stoked. I just saw a commercial for it at the Super Bowl. Ah! Oh, so, was there a yeah. commercial for it? It's not like, it's like a fake, it's like a teaser. They don't really show much, but it oh, was okay. it's Under the Dome by Stephen King. Oh Coming yeah, soon. that book is wicked. You touch the dome, you die. Wow. That's pretty don't intense. Don't do it. That's don't intense. touch it. No touching. <laughs> that, that's the line from Arrested Development. You'll get that after the first episode. <laughs> <laughs> no touching, no touching. I think, yeah, we just, uh, that was our last question here. Cool. Yeah, that's We right love on, it. Thank you for being here. You're thanks so awesome. Thanks for having me on. I appreciate it. And yes. thanks to everybody and out there. I'm, I'm really glad you didn't notice how much I was stalking you at Across Your LA, but <laughs> I <don't> know. <laughs> yes. I noticed all. Well. Yeah, I Emily was really should worried. tweet you the picture. We call it the Larson stare. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we call and it the Larson stare And you like Applejack so much, Emily stresses Applejack. <laughs> See, now I'm going to watch out for you at uh, Vegas, and I'll know if you're looking at me. Oh, my I'll... gosh. Yes. You will. It's the creepiest stare ever. <laughs> I have huge eyes, and I just blink and stare. And then and I wave. Like, wave. It's like the a most awkward wave. wave. It's like <laughs> slow motion beauty pageant wave. <laughs> Hilarious. Yeah, I was so nervous. I'm like, you're going to, like, creep him like, out, and he's never going like, to talk to us. Stop it. Stop it. <laughs> this is not okay. You can't treat people like this. <laughs> I was like in a daze. I was having so much fun. It's, Same it's, here. It's, That's why when she was like, "Look, it's M. A. Larson," and I'm looking for a girl named Emily, and I'm like, <laughs> "Why are you? What? You were at a Starbucks, other, by the way." That's so. the other thing I like about uh, my using my initials is I, I like that some people think I'm a girl. I love it. <laughs> I think it's great. That's funny, but <laughs> yeah. I think everyone's going to start calling you M. Alicorn Larson. M. Alicorn Larson. <laughs> That yeah, your name I, I have to say, I love your tweets that you made after it was announced, basically. I was I just was, like, <laughs> I was just in shock. I was like, what the hell just happened? I was getting the biggest kick out of it, like, the one about the dog food or whatever. <laughs> Why does this keep <laughs> happening? <laughs> Dude, I've, gotten, I've gotten so much funny, like, art and gifts and stuff sent my way. Oh, gosh. Uh, after that, so, like, really funny stuff. Uh, Bronies and art just go hand in hand. If you haven't seen the Oprah one, you got to check it out. It's, I it's do. Awesome. Wait, what is it? I need to look at that. In fact, I'll tweet it now. Oh, yeah, okay. Find it. Find it. <laughs> okay, so while he tweets that, let's say bye to the chatty box. Oh, yeah, so um, chatty box, thank you guys for tuning in tonight. Hi, everybody. Yeah, so thank you, Amy Larson, for... Coming on Drink here some Red Bull, you'll get wings. <laughs> you'll also grow a horn because you've been listening to the Alicorn King. Or the Pegasus King of the Pegasus Sisters. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. yeah. Pegasus 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 is King. Uh, I yes. can't find it. Somebody will tweet it. Somebody will be listening to this and will tweet it. Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah, that's fine. But, um, yeah, so thank you again. Um, Thanks, guys. Yeah, so we'll talk to you later, and bye, Chatty we'll Box. You, uh, in Vegas. We are very proud to have you as our king. Oh, thanks. <laughs> yeah. And we'll All right, I'll talk to you later. Vegas. Yes. So, bye. Bye, bye, Chatty Box. All right, bye, Chatty Box. Love you. Mwah! <laughs>